Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering where we will be working through an example problem to determine the internal force diagrams along this structure. In the previous video we introduced the theory for determining internal force diagrams so you can find a link to that in the description below if you would like to catch up with the theory. This structure is being supported by fixed support at point A and has a free end at point C. A uniformly distributed load of 8 kN per metre is being applied in the downwards direction to the entire length of the bar from point A to point B, and a concentrated load is being applied to the free end of the structure at point C. This concentrated load has a magnitude of 10 kN and is acting in the right direction. Again, we will be determining the internal force diagrams for the entire length of the structure, from point A to point B and from point B to point C. If you are happy in your understanding of the previous example, why not pause the video here and see if you can solve this problem on your own. Ok, welcome back if you did attempt this on your own, but now let's go through it together. We will start off by calculating the support reaction forces. For this structure we only have one support, which is fixed, and therefore we will get a horizontal and vertical reaction force and a reaction moment. To calculate these we will apply the conditions for equilibrium, where the sum of all horizontal forces must be equal to zero, the sum of all vertical forces must be equal to zero, and the sum of all moments relative to a point, which we will choose to be A, must be equal to zero. Taking the x coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to Rx plus 10, which equals zero. So we can see that Rx is equal to negative 10 kN. Taking the y coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to Ry minus 8 times 4, which equals 0. So therefore, Ry is equal to 32 kN. Finally, taking the anticlockwise rotation direction to be positive, the sum of all moments relative to point A is equal to negative Rm minus 8 times 4 times 2 minus 10 times 3, which equals 0. So Rm is equal to negative 64 minus 30, which equals negative 94 kilonewton meters. Applying this to our diagram now, at the fixed support we have a horizontal reaction force of 10 kilonewtons acting towards the left, a vertical reaction force of 32 kilonewtons acting in the upwards direction, and a reaction moment of 94 kilonewton meters acting in the anticlockwise rotation direction. Having calculated the support reactions, we will insert our diagram for the positive sensors for internal forces, which we will call our starred diagram for reference throughout the question. Let's start by analysing the left side of the structure at point A. At point A, the first force is the vertical reaction force of 32 kN acting upwards. Referencing our starred diagram, we can see that at the left end of the bar, positive shear forces act downwards and so the reaction force of 32 kN causes a shear force of negative 32 kN. Now, moving along the bar from left to right, we only have a uniformly distributed load, or in other words, a constant distributed load. From our table previously, we know that if the distributed load is constant, the shear force will be linear, and the change in shear force is equal to the area of the distributed load. Additionally, as the distributed load is being applied in the downwards direction, which is positive to the left hand side, the shear force increases. To calculate the change in shear force from point A to point B, we need to calculate the area of the distributed load from point A to point B, which for this constant distributed load is simply 8 kN per metre times 4 metres, which equals 32 kN. As we know that the shear force increases from point A to point B, we can work out that at point B, the shear force will be equal to negative 32 plus 32, which equals 0 kN. So at point A, the shear force is equal to negative 32 kN, and at point B, the shear force is equal to 0, and the shear force increases linearly from point A to point B. Therefore, the shear force diagram will look like this from point A to point B. Now we need to do the same from point B to point C. There is no distributed load being applied to the bar from point B to point C, and therefore, remembering back to our table, the shear force must be constant along the bar. To calculate this constant value, we must determine the shear force that is being applied to the entire length of the section. 
For this case, the only force being applied to bar BC is the horizontal force of 10 kN acting in the right direction. Therefore, we need to calculate the component of that force that is acting perpendicularly to the bar, and for this, we will use trigonometry. As bar BC has a horizontal and vertical length of 3 meters, we know that the angle between bar BC and the horizontal plane is 45 degrees. Now, if we were to draw on the component of the horizontal force that is perpendicular to the bar, we can see that we know the value of the hypotenuse side, which is 10 kN, and we are trying to find the value of the adjacent side. So using trigonometry, we can calculate that the magnitude F is equal to 10 times cosine 45, which equals 7 kN rounded to the nearest integer. And this is the constant shear force that is being applied to bar BC. Now revisiting our starred diagram, the shear force of 7 kN is being applied from the right end of the bar. So comparing our diagram to the starred diagram, we can see that the shear force of 7 kN is negative. Now that we know this, we can add the constant shear force to our shear force diagram. And doing so, we get the following, where the shear force along the bar from point B to point C is constantly negative 7. Note that due to the convention for internal force diagrams, negative shear forces are drawn above the bar. Now moving on to the bending moment diagram, starting at the left end of the bar, we have a moment of 94 kNm acting in the anticlockwise rotation direction being applied to point A. Referencing back to our star diagram, for the left side of the bar at point A, a positive moment acts in the clockwise rotation direction, so therefore we know that the moment of 94 kNm acting in the anticlockwise direction will result in a bending moment of negative 94 kN in the bar at point A. And so, we can plot this on our bending moment diagram like so. Moving along the bar, after point A, the bending moment is equal to the negative of the area of the shear force diagram. From point A to point B along the bar, the shear force is negative, which means that the bending moment increases. Remembering our principles, the shear force is the derivative of the bending moment, and as the shear force is linear, the bending moment is therefore parabolic. Also remember that the slope, i.e. the gradient of the bending moment, is equal to the shear force. So at point A, the slope of the bending moment will increase at a rate of 32 kN. And then, at point B, the slope of the bending moment will be flat, as along bar AB, the shear force at point B is equal to zero. As the shear force is linear across the bar, the area below the shear force diagram can be easily calculated using the formula for the area of a triangle. Between point A and point B, the area is equal to 32 times 4 times 1 half, which equals 64 kN meters. And as we know that the bending moment at point A is equal to negative 94 kN meters, we know that the bending moment at point B is equal to negative 94 plus 64, which equals negative 30 kN meters. So we can plot this on our diagram as well, remembering that the bending moment is increasing at a rate of 0 at point B i.e. it is flat. Now we can simply connect the two plots with a parabolic curve like so. The bending moment diagram from point B to point C is a little bit simpler, as the shear force is constant along bar BC. Starting at the left of bar BC, at point B we have a bending moment of negative 30 kN meters, as we have just worked out for the previous section, so we will plot this on our bending moment diagram like so. Moving along the bar, from point B to point C, the shear force is negative, which means that the bending moment will increase, and after point B, the bending moment will be equal to the negative of the area of the shear force diagram. Remembering our principles, the shear force is equal to the derivative of the bending moment, and as the shear force is constant, the bending moment is therefore linear. Also remember that the slope, i.e. the gradient of the bending moment, is equal to the shear force. So, at point A, the slope of the bending moment will be increasing at a rate of 7 kN, and then, at point B, the slope of the bending moment will also increase at a rate of 7 kN. And this makes sense because the linear property of the bending moment diagram means that it will change at the same rate along the entire length of the bar. As the shear force is constant along the bar, the area below the shear force diagram can be easily calculated using the formula for the area of a rectangle. 
We already know that the height of this rectangle is 7 kilonewtons, but we need to know the length as well. For this, we will use Pythagoras' theory, where the square root of the length of the adjacent side squared plus the length of the opposite side squared is equal to the length of the hypotenuse, which is just the length of bar BC. Doing this, we get that the length of bar BC is equal to the square root of 3 squared plus 3 squared, which equals 4.24 metres to two decimal places. Now we can calculate the area of the shear force diagram, which equals 7 times 4.24, which equals 30 kilonewton metres, rounded to the nearest integer. As we know that the bending moment diagram at point B is equal to negative 30 kilonewton metres, we can work out that the bending moment at point C is equal to negative 30 plus 30, which equals zero. So again, we can plot this on our diagram, remembering that the bending moment is increasing at a rate of 7 kilonewtons at point C. As we know the bending moment increases linearly from point B to point C at a constant rate of 7 kilonewtons, we can draw this onto our diagram, giving us this final bending moment diagram. Finally, we must determine the axial force diagram. To determine the axial force diagram for bar A, B, as we have seen before, we must cut the bar isolating one part of the structure and then solve for equilibrium. Cutting the bar at the midpoint of AB and then isolating the left part of the structure, we have this diagram. And now, referencing back to our start diagram, we can draw on the positive sensors for the internal forces at the cut end of the bar, denoting them V for shear force, N for axial force, and M for bending moment. As we are only trying to find the axial force though, we only need to worry about n. Applying the conditions for equilibrium and taking the x-coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to n minus 10, which equals 0. So we can see that n is equal to 10 kilonewtons. Therefore, the axial force at the centre of the bar is equal to 10 kilonewtons. And as this is positive, we know that it is a tensile force acting away from the centre of the bar. Additionally, from the diagram of the structure, we can see that no axial loads are applied to the structure between points A and B. So the axial force will stay constant from point A to point B, and the axial force diagram will look like this. Noting that the convention for this diagram is that the positive axial force is above the bar and a negative axial force will be below the bar. And now, the last step is to carry out the same process for bar BC. Cutting the bar at the midpoint and then isolating the right part of the structure, we have this diagram. Again, referencing back to our start diagram, we can draw on the positive sensors for the internal forces at the cut end of the bar, denoting them V for shear force, N for axial force, and M for bending moment. And as we are only trying to find the axial force, we only need to worry about N. Earlier on in the question, we used trigonometry to calculate the shear component of the 10 kN force. And now we are going to do the same to find the horizontal component to the axial force in terms of n. Having drawn the diagram for the angle between the axial force, n, and the horizontal plane, and having drawn on the horizontal component of n, it will now be easier to derive an expression for it in terms of n. Using trigonometry, we know that the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse side is equal to the cosine of the angle, and therefore we can rearrange for our hypotenuse side f, such that f is equal to n divided by cosine 45. Now we can apply the conditions for equilibrium, where taking the x-coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to 10 minus n over cosine 45, which equals 0. So rearranging for n, we get n equals 10 times cosine 45, which equals 7 kilonewtons. Therefore, we can conclude that the axial force at the middle of bar BC is 7 kN, and since it is positive, it is a tensile axial force. Again, from the diagram of the entire structure, we can see that no axial loads are being applied to the structure between points B and C, so the axial force will stay constant from point A to point B, and we can draw the axial force diagram like so. And now, we have completely determined the internal force diagrams for this structure. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. 
If you do have any remaining questions, or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.